Take your Bibles, if you would, and go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. The theme verse for this weekend in the Lord. And it says, And above all these things, put on charity, the love of God, in the renewed mind, in manifestations. And sometimes I like to look at it like, the love of God in our minds in action. What we do with it is pretty neat. That love of God. And that's a tremendous theme verse for any weekend. The word bonds means that which binds together. A band, a bond. It's like ligaments by which the members of the human body are united together. That which binds us together, a bundle. That's what the word means. It's the bond is what keeps us together. And that is just tremendous. Um, in this section of God's word, and I'm thinking about uh, uh, Colossians 1, I mean 3, 1 through 17, is mainly about the renewed mind. What we do with our minds, what we think about. God's asking us to think about these things. So, with that in mind, I'd like to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. And this is where I'm, this is the verse that I'm going to investigate this morning. And it goes like this When there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, skimpy, born nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And that's what, that's, if I had a title for this teaching, that's what it would be. Christ is all and in all. It's all in all. And there's many scriptures that talk about this. But to look at this verse in a little more detail, it says, neither Greek nor Jew. So the Greek means, uh, most of the time, it means the rest of the civilized world. In God's word, there's three classifications of people. Uh, Greek, Judean, Church of God. So those two groups, the Judeans by religion, plus the rest of the world, right? And then it goes on to say, circumcision, nor uncircumcision. It's like it's saying it twice. Saying it twice. And then it says, barbarian, skinfian, born nor free, but Christ is all and in all. The Greek word for Greek <laughs> means the rest of the civilized word, world. I mean, that's how it's looked at. The Greeks were the rest of the civilized world. The word barbarian means those whose speech is rude, rough, and harsh. Ooh. One who speaks a foreign language or strange language which are not understood by another. The Greeks uh, didn't really care for the barbarians. No, didn't care. And sometimes, you know, we just look at it the, as a translation, foreigner. They're foreigners. Different language. You know, that it has an added notation of rudeness and brutality, too. Pretty wild. But the word skimpy means rude or rough. A Scythian is an inhabitant of Scythia, which is modern day Russia. And these Scythians were regarded as the wildest of the barbarians, the most lawless people. So, what it's saying here is the most lawless people are all in all. All in all. It's pretty. When I look at this, I, get, I just get blessed. I think about. You know, the Greeks, when they first heard this, when they first got this writing from Paul, and they saw, hey, we're just like the Judeans, we're the same. 
this is really cool. And then they heard Bob Barry, and they go, well, you know, I don't know. You know, they had to work on it in their mind. And then when they heard skin, uh, skin things, I'm pronouncing it wrong now, but when they said it, the most in love, the most outrageous, the most crazy people. And I heard one teaching where they said, this, this is like uh, the Hells Angels. <laughs> You're not going to invite them to your fellowship. I, I have a little exception to that because in one of my first fellowships, we had a Hells Angel who was in our fellowship. And he was a great guy. So funny. He just had so much, he was so humorous. To, and he was a biker, Hells Angel. And he loved our, our ministry because there was a guy that had a motorcycle, was on a motorcycle with a Harley hat on. And so he says, Yeah, this is the ministry that I want to be a part of. So we had a skin thing in our fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, one of the things that I see here, this is not talking about differences. Is talking about what we have in the same, how we are the same. See, we are all believers. We all born again. We all have Holy Spirit. And in God's word, it says that we're the same as Jesus Christ is all and in all. Every one of us just like Jesus Christ. I like that. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Verse 27 and 28, I'd like to read these ones for you. It says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, all you guys that have been baptized into Christ, now this is not a works, this is a grace, have put on Christ. Now this is a works, and this is of the renewed mind. And one of the things that I've been doing in the last six months as I've been reading God's word, I've been trying to divine, you know, what's grace, what's the renewed mind. You know, grace, you know, is not a lest any man should boast. But if you put something on, that works. You know, so, and it even divides itself sometimes right in the verse. Which is interesting as you read God's word and try to learn God's word. Verse 28 says, For there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And once again, we're all one in Jesus Christ. I think that's just wonderful to think about. We're all the same spiritually. We all have Christ within us. We can all do the works that Jesus Christ did in prayer. If we believe. Pretty neat. There's no difference in the born again one. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Then why the divisions? Why are there divisions? Well, it's because either one or both parties do not know the accuracy of God's word or refuse to believe. And that's it every time. Any group of believers with Christ in them, with the word of God, can agree on the word of God. If they are honest, willing to hash it out with God's word, and let God's word be the truth. They can hash out everything, anything. Husband and wife, group of people, family members, you name them. If they're honest and they are willing to let the word of God speak for itself and renew mind, they can agree. So there's no reason, in one sense, for any divisions. We just believe the word of God. Um, all divisions really come about by one thing, one word, doctrine. Do you believe the doctrine or not? 
Throughout the gospel period, Jesus Christ told his disciples, beware of the doctrine. We're always to be aware of the doctrine. I'd like for you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1, and read this little section of God's Word. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, through the will of God, and sex is these, our brother, unto the church of God. See, that's one of the classifications. The church of God, which is a Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. In the first 10 verses of 1 Corinthians, the term Jesus Christ our Lord is used 11 times. 11 times, some form or another, it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. That in everything ye are enriched by him. And I put this in as one of the eleven. So who's it talking about? The Lord Jesus Christ. In all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye become behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord, you're right, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there a point being made here? I think so. Now, verse 10, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, hmm. and that ye be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Pretty wild. I made a list of these things, and I just like to read them to you. In Jesus Christ, he sanctified you, every one of you. Jesus Christ is our Lord and theirs. Doesn't stop with just us, and theirs. Jesus Christ called you to be saints in every place, even in El Salvador, the Philippines, every place where there's believers. What I'm seeing here is, look at all the stuff that we have that's the same. Whoever we are and where we live, Jesus Christ enriches you. Have you been enriched? Yes, we have. Jesus Christ's testimony was confirmed in us because we tried it and it worked. We all can speak in tongues. We all can receive revelation, do the works that Jesus Christ did in greater. Are we enriched by Jesus Christ? I think so. We are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is confirmed in you to the end, to the end of our lives. He's always there with us. You know what this reminds me of? Reminds me of the wagon trains that went from the east to the west. The first ones when they were first, you know, settling in the United States. And on the way across, there were many perils. There were perils of bad weather, tremendous rainstorms, Indians, wild animals, places really hard to cross. 
And so they would hire a, a wagon train master to guide them to the west. And he would hire people to help them. And as they went across, and you've seen some of these western movies, they would go through so much to get across. And when they got to the end, you know what they did? They had a party. You know, they were so happy. We made it across. We made it. And there's also in some of these movies where the wagon train masters were not good people, evil people, that saw the trouble and ran, or soul just ripped them off immediately, like way to the end. You know, but with God, Jesus Christ, he is going to see us to the end, all the way to the end. So we never need to be worried about tomorrow or the day after or how we're going to take care of our families and stuff. We got Jesus Christ almost to the end. No, <laughs> to the end. That is just the best. Oh yeah, you are blameless in the day of Jesus Christ. Hey, we're all going to stand up and we're all going to get our rewards. That's it. Wow. We are called to the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 10, it says, be no division. So how many divisions should we have? None. Oh, none. Okay. That's what I, how I read it. We're to be perfectly joined together. Okay? And uh, of the same mind. Of the same mind. I guess we're supposed to do that, too. Be of the same judgment. This is getting too much, isn't it? <laughs> no, but this is what we're supposed to do. The same mind. You know, in the world, they call up for unity. They say, can we just all get along? Can we all be at peace? And at the same time, the world just points out the differences. You know, you're, this person's this way, this one here, they came from there. They belong, you know what I mean? But in God's word, we're all the same in Christ Jesus. God's word makes us all the same. I'd rather believe that. It's just good. You know why? Because we have the Holy Spirit. We take the place of Jesus Christ on the earth. So, but what happens? Let's continue reading in verse 11. For it has been declared unto me of you, my brother, by them that are of the household of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now, this I say, that every one of you says, I am of Paul, I am of Paulus, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? I don't think so. Was Paul crucified for you? I didn't read that. No, no, I don't think that was it. Were you baptized in the name of Paul? No, we were baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it easy to be the same? But it looks like here that one of the problems is they were following someone other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse, let's go to chapter 3 of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, verse we're going to read 1 through 5, and it just gives you a little more insight here. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. But you know what I think? I think everyone here is able to handle the word of God. The meat of the word of God. We're not babes here. Yeah. And neither now are ye able. Verse 3. For ye are yet carnal, wherein there is among you envy. You know what envy is? It says in God's word, idolatry. If you envy what someone else has, that's idolatry. 
strife, divisions. Are ye not carnal? If that's the way you think and walk as men, men of the world. For while one says, I am a Paul, another, I am a Paulist, I need not carnal. Is that the way you go? Who is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe. These are people that teach you God's word and by whom you believe. Jesus Christ gives. I'm messing up my note. Uh, whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. The Lord gives to every man, and he gives them Holy Spirit. He gives every man their ministry. Jesus Christ gives that to each of you. The Lord Jesus Christ gives everything to every believer that they need. Everything. The Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church and also called the one body. So how does this work? Well, we just keep reading God's word. Verse 6 says, I have planted Apollos water, but who gives the increase? God. God is who gives the increase. So then neither he that planted anything or he, neither he that water, but the important thing is God that gives the increase. Now he that planted and he that watereth are one. You know what that means? The same. The same. What someone will speak to someone, someone else will help them along a little bit. We don't even know the other people that are involved sometimes, right? Because they met you in a different place with a different group of people. But it's the same God. But God giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that water is one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. And who else would you want to be in partnership with? God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. Let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. That word he is kind of interesting. It means to play, pay close attention with your eyes. To pay close attention, to take heed. And what are we to take heed on? To how we build it there. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is who? Jesus Christ. You've said it. <laughs> that is it. God gives the increase. Everyone takes heed how we build this thereon. Paul builds upon Jesus Christ. We build upon the same foundation. He that planted in water is one, the same one, the same thing. See, God's word is word of the same. Go to Romans chapter 16. So what do we do? If we divisions, how do we handle them? What do we think about divisions? Well, the only way I know to find the answers is go to God's word. And in Romans chapter 16, in verse 17, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions hmm. and offenses contrary to the doctrine. That's what I've been trying to say. There's only one thing we got to watch out for, and that's the doctrine. How the person dresses makes no difference. What they like for music makes no difference. How tall we are makes nothing except the doctrine. We listen for the doctrine. We pay heed. We watch out for the doctrine. And it says, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. It doesn't say beat them up or anything like that. You know, it says avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. They got another agenda. 
but their own bellies, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart of the son. For your obedience is come abroad unto all, and I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise to that which is good, wise to what the word of God says, and simple concerning evil. I don't need to know about all the conspiracies and the trail that it makes to evil. I just know it's evil. It's enough. And I know the word, and I know that God, through Jesus Christ, is going to get us to the end. That's what it says. You know? For your obedience is come abroad unto all, and I am glad therefore on your behalf. But yet I would have you I read that. Uh, go to verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. You know, later. No, it says shortly. We just call him the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. We continue to help those who will fellowship with us. And who knows, maybe someday some will come back to the right doctrine. But it's all about doctrine. Every time, every division, every split between people, when it comes to God's word, is doctrine. It's always the doctrine. A wonderful key that I see here is that we are to fellowship with like-minded believers. We're to hang out with people who want to do the word. As believers, we can share and compare spiritual things with spiritual things, like it talks about in God's word. We can help each other grow in, in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's what we want to do. And the next verse, the next word, if you follow that along, is Timothy. So let's go to 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul has some instruction for Timothy, who was the minister, a leader in the Christian ministry. When we read Timothy, 1st and 2nd Timothy, we are learning what Paul said about this leader and what he used to do and watch out for. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I mean, we can't get rid of Jesus Christ, can we? It just keeps coming up. As I besought thee to abide still in Ephesus, when I went to Mecca Madonna, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other what. What they wear. They're not wearing the right, no, it's doctrine, it's doctrine every time. Neither give heed to, heed, the word, heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edification, which is in faith, so do you. Now the end of the commandment is charity, the love of God in the renewed mind and manifestation out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned from which some have swerved and have turned aside unto vain jangles. It, it even sounds bad, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't want to get involved in vain janglings, but this means empty talk, just stories, sometimes very mystical about what's going on and the outer limits of the world and the sky and they're running the world and, and concepts and ideas, oh, very mystical, told by the father of lies, sometimes called in God's word, 
the doctrine of devils. That's what it's called. Uh, verse 7, desiring to be teachers of the Lord, understand neither what they say, nor whereof they confirm. But we say that the law is good if a man used it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man, and all believers are righteous men, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. That's who the law is made for. And I'm going to read this list, and it's not a good one. And I know none of you were there. For the ungodly and profane, for murderers of fathers. No, oh, I didn't get there either. Uh, murderers of mothers, for main slayers, for whoremongers. Not me, not us, you know. For them that defile themselves with mankind, for man stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound, what? It's always the doctrine. When you deal with people in groups and situations, what's the doctrine? It's the only thing we really need to look at. Not long pants or short pants. It's the doctrine. We need to keep our mind on sound doctrine. The word that we have been taught that we know is true, that we search to see that is true. The word that we know and believe. Sound, listen to this. This was done in session one of PFL. Sound doctrine is right believing. Right believing will give you right results. We want and need right results in our lives to live the more abundant life. I'm concerned about doctrine, not because I want to have something to stand on. I want people to have results in their lives. Results, positive results, the more abundant life that Jesus Christ came to make available is available through sound doctrine, right believing, getting right results. Who wants right results? I do. Let's go to second. Timothy chapter 2. Just a couple of verses here. I want to start in chapter 2 of 2 Timothy, verse 14. It says, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord. They strive not above words to no profit. The word but just to get rid of it. To no profit to the subverting of the hearers. That's all they're trying to do is get you off the word, off the down, the sound doctrine where you can get right believe and get right themselves. Then it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, who a workman that needeth not to be ashamed of rightly dividing the word of truth. That's where I want to be. Study, keep looking. It's a lot like taking heed. Paying attention to what you're seeing. You know, to make sure that it's sound doctrine. We live in the sound doctrine. Right. <laughs> um, the next verse, 16. But shun profane and vain battle. Vain Babylon. That means empty discussions. Discussions of vain and useless matters. Have you ever been in those discussions? Well, I have. Sometimes right in the fellowship room, we're all sitting around drinking coffee and these conversations come up. And they're empty discussion, vain discussions, have nothing to do with sound doctrine, just ideas and philosophies and craziness. It says, shun that stuff. For they will increase into, unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as a canker or a cancer. And we know what cancer does. Doesn't help anybody. Of whom is Homogenes and Philistines, 
who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is passed already. That was their problem. We have other doctrines that are being passed our way. And overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and everyone that is named the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. We're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. In closing, I just want to say this. This is how I look at it. For the most benefit, we should fellowship with like-minded believers. It just saves time. We don't have to work so hard on keeping the right doctrine together. We're going to fellowship with like-minded believers, with people that were able to compare spiritual things with spiritual things together to build an understanding of God's word to continue to grow. We should help each other to stand on the word of God, which we know and believe. I would love to see more people living with the word of God in their lives. That's why I speak it as much as I can. I'd love to see more doing that. Our time is valuable. What we do is valuable. For me to come here and the time I spent, it's valuable. And I think it's very profitable to be here. That's why I came. <laughs> you know, but we have to think about that. Who do we want to fellowship? I want a fellowship with like-minded believers. It's the key to the more abundant life. God will give us the increase. Who has time for empty, vain discussions with useless matters? Not me. Well, dear God, just thank you for your word. Thank you that... We have it so we can know what to do and how to hang out with each other and how to be blessed with each other. And that we can have the sound doctrine in our lives so that we can have right believing, right positive results. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.